spilled half of it on the way in here today. Let's drink what's left of the whiskey. Welcome to Whiskey and Whiskey. I'm the Whiskey Chaser, Brian, coming straight out of Christie's to your phone or laptop or whatever it is you're watching this on. As always, cheers to the Christie's bios, leaving me run wild in here. Not gonna waste any time today breaking out the big guns, cast strength, age 13 years, all port. And uh, looking at the bottle, it's nearly damn gone. On, of course, thanks to John and Cario Killarney for sending this on to me, F-O-C. Cheers, lad. This is the Roland Co. 13 year old, all port, single malt Irish whiskey. I most certainly will not be addressing the very near empty elephant in the room. The only thing I can say really is that I'm glad I had enough to liquid here to be able to do this video today. This is good, this is very good. I should just cut the video at that and leave it, go home, walk away. Why? Because I want these all to myself. Yes, it's that good, but I won't. In typical Chaser style, let's get into a little bit of the history. Rowan Co. is a very new and very contemporary distillery in the heart of Dublin, owned by Diageo. It's a whiskey brand that's steeped in a very rich history. Named to honor the memory of George Rowe, a whiskey maker whose distillery was, in its time, the largest in Ireland and quite possibly the world. George Rowe and Co. helped build the golden age of Irish whiskey in the 19th century. Their distillery at Thomas Street in Dublin extended over 17 acres and they were Ireland's largest exporter of whiskey. As neighbors for hundreds of years, George Rowe and Co. and Guinness were the two biggest names at the heart of Dublin's historic brewing and distilling quarter. Other neighbors you might have heard of, how about Powers Whiskey, John Jameson? All right, let's jump back a little in time to 1757 with Peter Rowe purchasing a small existing distillery on Thomas Street in Dublin. At that time in Ireland, there were very strict laws around distilling, so the output of the distillery remained very much low. And because of such laws, expansion of the distillery wasn't really gonna happen. Peter operated a still at the time of about 234 gallons. In 1784, another Rowe family member, Nicholas Rowe, set up another distillery not far away in Pimlico, which is very close to St. James's Gate. This distillery had a much larger still and therefore output. In 1802, the still had a capacity of roughly 1,100 gallons, which was replaced by a roughly 1,500 gallon still by 1807. Jump to 1832, and George Rowe had actually inherited both distilleries and expanded them. Lucky. There were also other premises leased at this time in Mount Brown that would be used as maltings, kilns, and warehouses for the distillery. The output of the Thomas Street distillery was roughly 250,000 gallons at this time. It's a lot of hooch. In 1862, George Rowe's two sons, Henry and George, took over the family business, which at this point was really going well and proved to be very successful. The Rowe family, as a result, had plenty of wealth. And in 1878, they donated 250,000 pounds to the restoration of Christ Church's Cathedral in Dublin and were actually knighted for their efforts. Bling, bling. Alfred Barnard also visited the distillery during his tour of Ireland and described it as being one of the largest and best equipped in the world. Occupying 17 acres, eight pot stills with an annual output of over 2 million gallons and a payroll of over 200 staff, that included 18 Coopers. Now, unfortunately, and as with most distilleries in Ireland around the early 1900s, the Irish whiskey industry began to feel the impact of a lot of different outside influences, which forced the industry to its knees. And as a result, in 1926, the distillery on Thomas Street was closed. Now, I'm sure you've heard of Guinness, but what people know little of is that George Rowe and Guinness were actually huge rivals, and both distillery and brewery were literally a stone's throw away. In fact, they were actually across the road from each other, literally. When Rose Thomas Street Distillery closed, Guinness jumped in and bought the site, along with all the remaining stock of liquid that the distillery had. Over time, the stock was sold off, as was a good portion of the land, and buildings that used to be the Thomas Street Distillery. Some buildings were sold and others were knocked. Some were kept by Guinness and used for offices. There is one or two remaining artifacts that stand as a reminder of what was once the largest distillery in Ireland, and that's St. Patrick's Tower, built in 1757. 
Ironically, the same year Peter Rowe opened his distillery. St. Patrick's Tower was also the former windmill of the Thomas Street Distillery and can be seen through the roof of the new Rowe & Co Distillery. Another interesting piece of information is that the tower is the oldest smock windmill in Europe. Along with the tower, a pear tree still stands that still flowers to this day. And this pear tree was the inspiration behind reinventing the new brand Rowe & Co. The new Rowe & Co Distillery, which opened in 2019, is on the site of the former power station for the Guinness Brewery at St. James's Gate. And there are still still some artifacts that are left behind to add to the sheer awesomeness of the new distillery. I did the tour back in 2019 when they opened and one word, epic. Now, I did always think from the outset that Rowan Co whiskey was, uh, you know, primarily about cocktails and for use in cocktails and mixologists and barmen. And you know, this may be the case for the blend and the curated series, but this, this right here, this is some serious shit. Oh, and uh, I did nearly forgot to mention the fact that uh, Diageo taking inspiration from the pear tree that helped reinvent the brand, the symbol of a pear is emblazoned at the bottom of each Rowan co-release to date. And it's uh, meant to be a symbol of the past that has built the bright future. Now, onto the whiskey. All right, so before we get into the whiskey, give me a thumbs up if you liked any bit of that history that I just did there. And of course, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already and hit the little notifications bell thingy too. It helps with the rankings or something like that. First and foremost, a total disclaimer here and a kind of a warning slash heads up. This is not a whiskey for the faint hearted. This is a cast strength beast at 58% ABV, all port maturation, tons of spice, really complex. So do yourself a favor and approach this one with a tiny bit of caution. I wouldn't normally say this, but maybe consider trying this with a drop of water first. I know, I know. Ease yourself into it. Don't be that person that has to leave the party early because you couldn't handle your You've been warned. Once again, because I like to repeat myself, this is a triple distilled, full port maturation, 13 year old single malt Irish whiskey. 58% ABV and yes, it is a limited release. Now I hear you ask, but what's the price, Brian? Well, viewers, it's between 70 and 80 euros. Yeah, 70 to 80 euro only. All port, cask strength, 13 year old, triple distilled, single malt. Anyone else think this is nuts or just me? So wait, I hear you say, Brian, the mats don't work out. Brand new distillery opened in 2019, releasing a 13 year old triple distilled single malt. Yeah, it's sourced whiskey. But from where? Somewhere up north, I think. Can't be too certain, really. I think County Antrim, maybe. Somewhere that does triple distilled single malt. So it's in the glass now after all my talk and let's have a little nose and a little taste. On the nose, oh my God. Straight away, plums, berries, pear, burnt brown sugar, demerara sugar, very complex. There's a lot going on. There's a lot of spice. There's a lot of fruity notes, very sweet. Bit of caramel, there's a bit of wooden spice coming through it. Again, it's very complex. Take your time with it. See what else you can pull out from it. But you know, what stands out the most for me, I think is, is a lot of the berries, berry, uh, berry fruits, and a lot, of the, a lot of orchard fruits stand out for me. Let's have a little drink. Let's launch it. Oh my God. You're getting the berries. Overwhelming, but really not overdoing it. Tons, lovely berries. Tons of spice. Getting the plum and getting the pear. A lot of woody tannins. It's really thick. It's really chewy and very, very dense, but still sweetness, loveliness. It's very good. It's very good, very full. Even kind of getting a bit of cocoa, a bit of darkness, a bit of dark chocolate or something. Something like that on it. Have another little sip. My God, there's so much going on. There is on the finish a slight bit of bitterness that collides with the wooden spice and the woody tannins. For some people might not like that, straight off. Totally would not consider that to be good. Now, my own, I think it works quite well. I think the sweetness combines with the bitterness as well on the finish and kind of cuts through that a little bit, eases it a little bit. But again, it is bitter. It does hang about. Oh, there's plenty of spice, plenty of juiciness. Still there, still in the palate, still on the tongue, a little bit drying towards the end. I'm gonna do something I normally never do, and you know me by now. Um, I'm going to add a drop of water. All right, so I did say at the start that you probably would want to drop a, uh, add a drop of water in here. I'm gonna do it myself to see what kind of a difference and what it draws out a little bit more of. Okay, straight away, that wooden spice and that kind of bitterness has tamed down an awful lot and getting a lot more sweetness through it on the nose. The berries, 
the dark berries really jump out through it, actually more so than the caramel is tapered off. No, no, the caramel is still there. Oh, lovely, really kind of fruity, really kind of, you know, well-balanced nose-wise. It's not overpowering in any sense. The fruits and the sweetness come through the most. Not so much more any of that, that plum, more the berry sweetness coming through. I'll try it again, cilantro. Still remarkably good. Not as spicy, but still there. The dark chocolate notes really coming through. There is a bitterness there that is, it's bitterness, it's woody tannins, and they're fighting a little bit. I like it, but I could genuinely see that if somebody was drinking that, they would, they might question that. Just full disclosure on that. But in saying that, the finish still quite nice, still quite warming, a little bit drier again. That's, that's kind of come through now since the last mouth coating of it. Still sweet, still bitter but balanced nicely. It finishes kind of nice and smooth and, you know, nice heat in it. I mean, I did say it was good, didn't I? Did I? I could stay drinking it. All right, so look, uh, in all fairness, I'm not endorsed by Rowan Co. to say any of this, and I'm certainly not sponsored by anyone either. I did actually pay for this bottle, so in the interest of transparency, what I'm saying is really my own thoughts and my own verdict. And honestly, look, I'm a big fan of port finished whiskies. I mean, you can really see that when I did my review of the all port red breast for the whiskey exchange. I'll leave a link above. But this is really a smashing whiskey at an absolutely amazing price point. Is it perfect? No, of course it's not. But what whiskey is perfect? And as I said before, whiskey is subjective. So you could very well try this and think, Brian, you're full of shit. But I think this is what we call a home run. Now, I would love to see more releases like this from Rowan Co. I think it's aimed at the whiskey drinker who likes bite, flavor, robustness, complexity, and of course, who doesn't like value? Amazingly, it's really under the radar of most whiskey fans, which in all fairness and reality is absolutely bananas how this has gone so long under the radar. So look, tell me, what's your favorite port finished or port matured whiskey? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Bonus points for rhyming. All right, so with that in mind, I'm definitely off to get myself another bottle. As you can see, it's nearly gone here. And again, thanks to John in Cario Killarney who got this bottle down to me really quickly for this video that, that I did for you today. It was full when I got it, but uh, you know, as I said, I spilled some of it on the way in. <laughs> Drink responsibly. As always, the thanks to the boys here in Christie's for being uh, very gracious hosts. It's nice to have a cool setting like this to be able to come into and record my rantings and thoughts. All right, so literally, I got nothing more to say. That's it, done, finished, I'm wrecked tired. Leaving now, see you all next week. Keep between the ditches, slancha.